Welcome back, Notre Dame fans, to another edition of the Irish Breakdown Podcast. I got my Gap Closer shirt on today because there's some Gap Closers that are going to be on campus this weekend uh, visiting Notre Dame. Plus, we've got a pretty big game this weekend for the Irish. They are off the bye Saturday, 7.30 p.m., Notre Dame versus Florida State, edition number 12 of this rivalry that began back in 1981 and has played it's it's interesting they've only played 11 games but i would argue they've played like three kind of classic games you think of the 1993 game a couple years later they played in an awesome bowl game florida state won it was a great game Derek mays had a big day and then of course in 2014 uh so the the irish are one and one in those classic games florida state has simply just not been good since that 2014 game when these two teams have played so uh, another uh, another missed opportunity for these two teams to be good, uh, which is we, we were talking about that in the show recently, Ryan. Uh, that's Ryan Roberts. And then, of course, my guy Trevor Trowbridge with me, how it's unfortunate that in you know since that 2014 game, they've played in 18, 20, 21, and now again in 24. And each one of those times, Florida State just has not been a very good football team. And it's taken away from what I a rivalry that I actually rather like, because as I said yesterday, Trev, to you, I look at Florida State a whole lot different than I look at like Michigan and Miami. You know, I actually have a level of respect for that program from from the job that Bobby Bowden did and, and the things that he did. So, uh, we're going we're going to preview this game, folks. We're going to talk about our keys to victory. We're going to then do our game predictions. We're going to kind of go through how we see this game playing out, give out our game balls. And then, of course, when we wrap it up with that segment of the show, Bill Bender from Sporting News is going to join me. And he and I are going to preview the big games from this weekend. And now that the college football playoff rankings are out, we can really point to the games that are going to have the biggest impact on uh, the next batch of rankings, which comes out on Tuesday. But before we begin, Trevor, I know you have a word from one of our new partners here at Irish Breakdown. I sure do. I sure do. It's going to be an exciting weekend of college football. And there's no better way to partner and sit down and watch those games than with my bookie right? My bookie is a sports book that gives you all the tools that you need to be successful and win the plays that you need to. One thing that I urge you guys to check out is tonight, it's Thursday night football, Cincinnati Bengals are taking on the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. For anybody that's been keeping track of the series, that was the same game last year where Joe Burrow injured his wrist and was out the rest of the season. It's almost a mirrored Thursday night game. You know, it's almost the same week even. So I would check out what those lines are at my bookie. But before you guys do that, make sure when you sign up, use promo code IRISH, I-R-I-S-H. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to double your deposit bonus, which is awesome. It gives you free money to go in and play, put down some extra bets. Make sure you check out that Thursday night football because it is risk-free Thursdays with my bookie. Also, make sure you enroll in their loyalty rewards program. What that's going to do for you is you're going to earn extra cash just for throwing down some bets. So you can do that for Thursday night football. You can do it for the college football games on Saturdays. And, of course, there's going to be a full slate of NFL games on Sunday. So be sure to check out my bookie. It's a sports book that gives you control and rewards you for every moment of play. Trev, obviously there's some big games going on this weekend in Notre Dame. There's also some other big events going on this weekend. And there is a uh, lovely lady named Kate Barita and her fiancé, uh, Jordan Brady, who are getting married this weekend. And they're big Notre Dame fans. Uh, very excited for them. They are from Ohio. They're actually from not too far from where I'm from. Uh, and so they're getting married this weekend. Want to congratulate them. Wish them all the best. Uh, and enjoy this great weekend. Hopefully, Trevor, their wedding weekend goes similar to your wedding weekend where Notre Dame got a very big win the weekend that you got married. Obviously, that was when the Irish went down and beat Texas A&M. So hopefully, uh, Kate and Jordan, you guys have an awesome wedding this weekend. And remember it from ever because you're going to look back and say, hey, you remember that weekend we got married? And then Jordan's going to be like, yeah, I remember that. That was a great weekend. Notre Dame smashed Florida State. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, we got married, too. That was awesome, too. But um, hopefully you guys enjoy that and just have a great time at that wedding. So that'll be a, a great weekend for those guys. So it's also a big weekend for Notre Dame, fellows, because the Irish get to play Florida State this weekend. And it is not a big game from the standpoint of, OG, oh, you're playing a big-named opponent who's having a great season, and it's a chance to earn a top 25 win. But it is an opportunity in their name to get back on, get back out there after the bye week and get back to showing the country what kind of team this this group is. 
Uh, the three last games in between the previous bye week, Notre Dame won by 42, by 37, and by 18 in a game that was not really as close as 18 points based on how Notre Dame kind of ran away with that one. So it's this four-game stretch for Notre Dame that I believe how they play in this game is going to have an impact on how they kind of build momentum going into this four-game stretch. And that's why I think playing really well in this game is important, not just because of Oh, you get a blowout win and you get to show the committee, hey, Florida, you know, Miami beat them by 22. We beat them by 42, you know, that kind of thing. But more so about getting yourselves back on track and saying, hey, look, we are playing really good football. We're going to take it to another level. And it starts with Florida State. And I mean, there's there's no suspense on who we're going to pick to win this game, folks. But I do believe there are some very important keys that we will discuss that go into all right, okay, yeah, we're going to all pick them to win, but it's not just about winning because if you just win this game, if you just win and you're winning, win and you're in, yeah, but if you kind of scrape by some bad opponents, then you could fall in the rankings. We've seen that happen with Notre Dame back in 2015. So it's also about how you play. So before we get into the specific keys of offense and defense, fellas, we're just going to talk briefly about just some overall keys to success in this game that allow Notre Dame to not necessarily win because I don't view these as keys to victory. I've used these as keys to dominating, to win this game the way you're supposed to win this game. I believe Notre Dame would have to play awful football to lose this game, like probably worse than how they played against Northern Illinois, in my opinion, to lose this game. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. But it's more about, okay, but are you going to play to the level that you need to to dominate this game and really build some momentum? And so the first one is simple. And I know you guys have some ideas on, on some of these things too, but the first one is simple, guys. Show up focused. Show up focused and play with fire. And that's really what it comes down to. Don't take this opponent lightly. Don't think you're just going to roll the balls out and then they're just going to lay down, roll over, and die because they're one and eight. Come out and, and be ready to act like this is 13 and 0 Florida State. You know, that's that's the thing. Act like you have something to prove. You're number 10. We're number 10. We're behind Penn State. They suck. Let's go prove the country that we're better than the number 10 team in the country. Whatever chip you need to put on your shoulder to come out and be pissed off about this game, then put that sucker on your shoulder with big bright lights and neon and all that kind of stuff. Just come out and play hard and then do like, the, you know, don't turn the ball over a bunch and some of those silly things that come from what? Lack of focus. So come out focused and come out and play with fire. Do that, fellas, and I think to a degree, the rest of the things that we're going to talk about are going to kind of take care of themselves. But that's something I'm going to be looking for right away, guys, right away. Is this team locked in? Are they ready to go out there and play hard? Are they focused to go out there and dominate in this game? That's going to be a big key that, that transcends all the other important things that we're going to talk about. I mean, my overall thought was building off of that, Brian, I would say, is that quite simply, this is a Florida State team at one and eight coming up to South Bend in November. Like, let's call it what it is, man. Even if there are some players that believe in Coach Norvell, this team wants to quit. Like, they want to quit. They want to tap out. Like, they want the season to be over at this point. All the injuries that they have sustained, all the bad play that they have put on film, like, they want this season to end, ultimately, right? And when you have a team that is like that, I need Notre Dame to come out and be the aggressor because my my biggest fear is that a team without an identity, and Florida State does not have an identity on both sides of the ball. They just don't have an identity, especially offensively right now with all the injuries that they have and their offensive line. I think they've only had two games this year where they've had the same starting five on the offensive line. Now they're rotating two quarterbacks. Like It is hideous right now, right? And with a team like that, if Notre Dame comes out and is the aggressor and comes out and punches them in the mouth, they're going to quit. I mean, quite simply. My biggest fear is that they come out and they do the old, we're just going to let them make mistakes and we're going to let what comes to us. No, 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 no. You got to go and you got to force it because if you force it, I promise you this Florida State team is going to quit. They're going to quit. This could be a game that is over by the end of the first quarter. It's just only a matter of time until the bell finally rings at the end of it. I just need Notre Dame to be the aggressor in this football game, make them quit, and a team with identity. When a team doesn't have identity, two things can happen, in my opinion. One is that you don't have you aren't prepared or focused enough to make them shell-shocked. Because a, a team without identity can be dangerous if you let them be dangerous. But if you are aggressive for, against them and you are the team that has that is going to push the envelope and is going to push the pace and play your brand of football, then a team without structure and a team without an identity is ultimately going to quit. So do not let a team without an identity find an identity on Saturday. 
let them be a bad football team, which is exactly what they are right now. I mean, I mean, Trevor, I don't like to uh, reveal things that we discuss behind closed doors, but I mean, I got to share, I'm going to set you up by what you shared with me when I sent you my keys to victory. And you said with a team like Florida State, a key to victory, you know, darn well could just be show up. I mean, and, and, and what we mean by, and, and what you mean by that is like, show, just be you, just be yourself. That's such a, an important part of this game. Yeah, th there is no secret recipe for success in beating this Florida State team. I'm, I think you guys killed it, right? This is a team that's struggling right now. And there's a there's two different mindsets that you can have when you look at a wounded animal like what Florida State is. You can kind of just sit back and wait to let nature take its course, or you can just kind of help put it out of its misery a little bit, right, for a lack of better analogies here. But th the only additional key that I have overarching – is Florida State's coming into this game with literally nothing to lose, which can be a dangerous team to play. Yeah. Literally nothing changes for them if they lose this game. They're like, ah, well, we lost again. And now you can say you lost a game to the best team on your schedule, right? Like this isn't Charleston Southern, right? So my, my only other key would be just be disciplined, right? Keep everything in between the whistles. No stupid penalties. Don't – I mean, I'm – it will be no part of Mike Norvell's game plan to, you know, try to get under their skin a little bit. But, I mean, when you're playing on a bad team, that that's frustrating for all levels of players. Keep everything between the whistle, man. That's that's going to be my one thing. Stay disciplined. Play your game. And as long as you do that, Brian, to your point of what we were talking about before the show even started, is if you show up and play your brand of football, this team can't hang with you for two quarters, let alone four. Right. So this game is one that could be put away very early. Just go out and play your standard of football. Keep everything between the whistles. And I think we're going to have a pretty fun post game show on Saturday night. Games. I, I also just think that football is a game that's built off of momentum and coming into yeah. this football game, you have all the momentum and they have none of it. The worst thing that you could do is early on in this football game, make them feel like they have a chance, right. make them feel like they were there to play, like that. They have a realistic opportunity to win a football game or at least compete compet leave it competitive. I mean, we see momentum swings in football games all the time. If you come out early on in this game, I promise you there won't be a momentum swing in right. this game. If you could keep that momentum throughout the first quarter, the first few minutes, I think that this team is just going to roll over and there is not going to be much fight left. Don't let them remember, hey, we're Florida State. Like, don't let them remember that. Don't let them remember that, hey, you know, we're supposed to be better than this. We're a preseason top 10 team. We still have them tomahawks on our helmets. We're still a team with a lot of NFL talent. Don't let them remember that. Don't let them think, hey, it's finally clicking. We can win this football game, guys. Because, Ryan, you, you, you talk about you know, the, the football is a game of momentum, and, and I don't disagree with that at all. I would simply add it's also a game of – emotion more than any other sport like baseball we've all we all grew up playing baseball we all grew up playing basketball basketball is not an emotional game doesn't mean you can't get emotional but it's not a game where emotion is needed to fuel you baseball is definitely not a game where emotion is needed to fuel you soccer's not i've played all those sports football is because if you're just kind of going through the motions this is not a game that you're going to overly enjoy this is a game where you kind of need that fire. I mean, you know, Ryan, I know you played middle linebacker. Trev and I played quarterback, so it's a little different for us. I know you also played baseball growing up, and, and I'm sure you played basketball when you were a kid and things like that. I would imagine a pregame ritual for someone playing middle linebacker is a little different than when you were playing shortstop because <laughs> you've got to psych yourself up a little bit for that just boom, 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 boom that you're going to face all game. Which you can't, you you know, you take someone out in baseball, you're kicked out of the game. You know, you take someone out in basketball, you're suspended for six games. If you don't do you that to, in football, you're getting benched. If you don't do that in football, you you have to have a you have to have a screw loose to play football at times, right? They like got to be a little bit psychotic. I mean, you really do. Explain I mean, why it, we're it, all on this show and why we uh, all former uh, and, honestly, dude. And I mean, it, seriously, it, it is a it is the most barbaric sports that we have right like this is a it's a cliche thing but like it's a warriors game man it is it's about who is the most dominant force on a on a field on a, a given saturday who's the most dominant force on a snap to snap perspective i mean like you said me going up there and, and having a, a bat where i need to be cool calm and collected and reserved and really kind of you know be patient patience is not 
what you need on the football field for the most part, unless you're running the football occasionally, right? On like an inside zone. I mean, it, you have to be the aggressor. You have to have a screw loose. You have to, because this is a game that is decided by warriors. And right. yeah, so I, I agree. This is not a game where you could just come in, you know, like I mean, I might listen to a little modest mouse, you know, getting up for a game occasionally because it's a little bit slower and I like to kind of amp up, but like right before kickoff, I mean, that's where like the hell's bells comes out. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that's where yeah. it is. So yeah. that's that. That's yeah. kind of the ramp up to a football game, and you need that little bit of like, screw loose in your mind to be a, yeah. a great football player. You need it. Yeah. If they do it, fellas, then I I I, I don't think there's any doubt that Notre Dame will have a big day. The question is going to be how much, because as we promised you guys at anyway, guys, we're not going to try to convince you that this team is something that they're not. But the thing that I will tell you is this is not a team that has had the kind of losses like a Stanford has had, for example. I don't know that if I were to say who's worse, Stanford or Florida State, I'd, I'd probably still say Stanford, even though I think Stanford's probably a better coached football team right now. But there's still a pretty giant talent gap between these two football teams, especially on defense. And that's the side of the ball where – you need to look at Stanford. They've given up 34 points, 40 points, 31 points, 49 points, 40 points, 27 points, 59 points. You know, Florida State's a team that's given up 20, over 20 a bunch of times, but they've given up 35, 36, and 42, the only times they've really given up in that, that high, high amount. And as we talked about, Trev, you and I the other day, I think Miami scored two touchdowns in the final three minutes of the game, you know, to kind of really like five minutes of the game to really put that one away. So you're 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 not going to just come out athlete them for four quarters the way that they did Navy or the way they did Florida State the way that they did you know some of these other inferior opponents on your football t- on, on your football schedule because you know there is still talent on this team there still is NFL talent on this football team and as you guys have both said the one thing you cannot let them do is to think that they have a chance it's going to be a little chilly. It's going to be in the 50s. Ryan apparently is going to have a park on in the 50s. So, you know, how are them Florida kids going to handle that? You know what I mean? If Ryan's from Jersey and he's wearing a park, how are those Florida kids going to be feeling? You don't, the, 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 you just want, you want to make them that this a miserable night for them because. Like I, I know Ryan, you're and from it, Jersey. It better Trev, not be a miserable night for me, or I'm going to be really upset. So, <laughs> right. not a night for me. But my thing is this, guys. You know, when you're in the elements and you're playing great football, it's almost like the elements fuel you. But when you're playing bad football and you're in the elements, you feel those elements much more because it's a it's a psyche thing, guys. And that's why this this just coming out with that fire, that passion, that hey, we want to bury this football team is so important. I, I want it. We've said it all, all along, guys. This team is better when they're pissed. They're better when they feel disrespected. They're better. I mean, we saw what this team can do in the opener, season opener, when they felt disrespected and pissed off. They came out and played their butts off. And then the next week we saw what this team looks like when they are feeling good about themselves and they feel like, you know, they, 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 they've arrived and they're big time and they're just going to, you know, this team on the other side of the field is not very good. They went seven and six last year. Mac team, they're just going to roll over and die. Oh, we're going to put this sucker right in the end zone and go up seven nothing. They're going to get pinned at their own two. Ball game. Nope. You let that team back in that game with, with mistakes. And then all of a sudden they started to believe, right? You can't do that to this football team. You've got to put this team away early. Navy knew very early on, uh-oh, it's going to be a real long day. Stanford knew pretty early on even though it didn't look like it with the, after the first quarter. They, 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 they found out real quick that, guys, this is going to be a really long day. Notre Dame needs to make sure that Florida State realizes from right away, like, we're in trouble. We're in over our heads. This is going to be a long night. And so that's what Notre Dame needs to do. So that, that's kind of the first section of the show, folks. But I, as, I just want to remind you before we kind of get into the keys to victory and the other parts, too, uh, Trev, you know what they need to do, right? See that thing down there? Oh, it's it's not there. Ryan's covering up the normal sign that says like, subscribe, notifications, uh, and make sure that you share this podcast. Not just share this podcast, but also uh, to share it literally with people, with your friends and family. Also a reminder that on Saturday, we will be having an IB tailgate on Saturday. Uh, we'll be in the Joy slot somewhere. They're not assigned parking spot, so it just kind of depends on where we will be when we get there. Uh, our plan is to get there sometime between 12 and, and 1, and uh, we'll have lots of goodies and stuff like that. I've had a lot of people ask us, too. Guys, there's no fee. If you're if you're a member of our site or if you're someone who listens to our show, you're already kind of showing your support to us. This is our way of thanking you, so it's not like this isn't a fundraiser for us, so just show up. Uh, another question I get asked a lot, can I bring a friend? Can I bring my wife? Can I bring my father-in-law? 
Yes, of course. Bring anyone you want to. This isn't like I'm checking IDs. Oh, excuse me. Uh, you're not part of the crew. Get out of here, right? We want everybody to be part of it. So just come, have fun. Uh, bring, Be prepared to have your appetites. Uh, I'm spending, a, all I ask is here, come, be ready to talk and have fun. But I'm spending a lot of money on food and stuff like that. So it would, I don't want to be taking all that home. I want you guys to eat all that and have all that and enjoy all that. So bring your appetites as well. So, and I don't want to hear anything like from Connor Laws. I'm hoping that I can make it. We're going to be there around one o'clock and we're going to be there all afternoon. So if you're in town, you you need to come by and swing by so we can see you guys and meet you guys and have some fun. So make sure you check that out as well.